People always ask me how it all started and in our first study 100% of the patients with ulcers had the bacteria. It's a given, these bacteria are probably the cause of ulcers and we were very surprised when people didn't believe it. The resistance to new discoveries in the medical profession especially is not always ignorance, it's the illusion of knowledge. People already thought they knew, knew the answer but they didn't realise there was a lot of problems with that. In fact, they didn't have a cure. Even when Barry came into my room one day and, and, and suggested to me that he thought, oh really, I think, you know, Robin, we're onto something really good. We could even get a Nobel Prize out of this. <laughs> I thought, don't be so bloody stupid. When I recognised that there was a lot of resistance to the idea that these bacteria were harmful, I said, well, you know, how do you go about proving it? So he said, let's infect a human. <laughs> so I said to Dr. Warren, I think, I think you should do it, Robin. Drink the bacteria. He said, oh no, 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 I'm too old, so you should do it yourself. And uh, so I decided that I was going to have to take it. And on that fateful day, it was a bit scary, really. And I, people say, what did it feel like when you had to drink the bacteria? And I say, well, it's probably ta like taking your first bungee jump. You know, you don't really know what's going to happen at the end. Theoretically, it's going to be safe, but you still have to gather up a bit of nerve to do it. I was quite surprised after a week when I started vomiting but quite delighted when on the 10th day I had an endoscopy and it showed that the bacteria had infected my stomach and I had developed gastritis. It was proven then that a healthy person could take the bacteria and be infected and get gastritis and that was the underlying process we thought which was the lead up to developing ulcers. Probably around the world hundreds of thousands of people was, had their lives saved by having helicobacter treatment, and that's not mentioning stomach cancer, which also kills a million people a year, even today. So it was a big discovery, and I suppose it was only a matter of time before somebody in the Nobel Prize committee had an ulcer, took the antibiotics, and they said, this is great, we must give a prize for this. I'm excited about having the uh, Science Library named after me. It's a great honour, of course, but it's one of the things that really was a key component. I'd go into the library to focus on one subject and, and read that up, and then I'd invariably see interesting things on the shelves and end up reading quite widely. So a two-hour project of research would take me all day. I would never underestimate the power of a good library. and. Uh, UWA had really got great libraries. So the message is, if it's interesting and you like to do it, that's probably the starting point for any research project. That's curiosity-driven research, and that's where the original, you know, thinking out of the box, uh, sudden unexpected discoveries, paradigm shifts are gonna come from. <laughs>